Hello, welcome to the YouTube Tuba Masterclass. My name's Patrick Harold. I'm the tuba player in the London Symphony Orchestra. I've been here for a rather long time, and I've been asked to work on just three little bits of the orchestral tuba repertoire. They are the, for some reason, un infamous um, Ride of the Valkyries, uh, the Fantastic Symphony, and finally, the Hungarian March, uh, from the Damnation of Faust. Let's work first of all on the road digging bit, and that's the Valkyries. Um, it always comes up at orchestral auditions. Uh, people want something heavy, substantial, but most importantly, intensely rhythmic. Um, I teach a lot, and students are often very, very anxious to make the most enormous sound they possibly can. That's very creditable, but if the enormous sound isn't in the right place, then you just become something of a noisy nuisance. So I would stress that you concentrate as much on rhythm as you do on sound and pitch. Let's have a go. Now, I'm fairly old, and as you'll have noticed, I need to take more breaths than, than probably some of you will need to. Um, that doesn't matter, as long as you can try to keep the pulse and the line. But the most important things I stressed at the beginning is that you really, really insist on playing in time. Um, not only the notes you do play, but the notes you don't play. The most dangerous area in my experience as a teacher in music is the long note and or the silence. There's a real tendency um, to shorten long notes or, or actually turn them into pauses. And similarly with, with silence, it must be counted as rigorously as if you were playing. So that's, that's my biggest um, recommendation to you. Also be very, very clear about the key you're in. The tonality is different to when the tune is played earlier on uh, by the orchestra. It often also tends to be a little slower and heavier, but it's marked lebhath, which means lively. So don't fall into the trap of turning it into um, sort of a heavyweight film music. Um, be careful of the pulse, be careful of the rhythm, be careful of the long notes, be careful of the silence, and have a good time. Now we go back in history a little to the music of Berlioz. Uh, I've been asked to play one section of the Fantastic Symphony and one section of the Hungarian March. Um, they're not the most famous bits. The most famous bit in the Fantastic Symphony is where the two tubers play together, uh, the Dies Irae. Now it's not here, but I'm gonna mention it anyway. If you do end up having to play that, do make sure that you play it as if you were singing. And remember the words, so it's D, A, Z, Re, D, A, Z, La. So it needs to be two four bar phrases, maybe even think of an eight bar phrase, but think about the consonants at the beginning of each word because that's exactly how those notes need to be articulated. Again, most players go for volume. Volume's a bonus. Clarity is essential. So let's begin now with the Fantastic Symphony, which is marked at figure 56 in my part. Uh, we have to hear, again, surprise, surprise, strive to be as rhythmic as we, as we possibly can. Um, again, don't try and make the biggest sound in the universe. The most important thing is clarity, rhythm, and pitch. 
uh, with my students, I, I very often try to get them to think as if they are overfed first trumpets. Um, we want all the energy and character of a first trumpet player, but on a big instrument. And in the bigger the instrument, the more that energy is crucial. If you just make a nice, big, fat, warm sound, you just make a nice, big, fat, warm sound. And it can very often be not very relevant or indeed very helpful to the rest of the brass section. So in time, in tune, with a clear and uh, very transparent sound, you need to also be aware of bar nine, where frequently a conductor will stretch the bar or move the bar forward. Um, you need to decide, if you're doing an audition, what you're going to do, and make it very clear that you intend to do it and it's not an accident. Okay, let's try. And now to the final excerpt. This is the Hungarian march from the Dimension of Faust. Most of the repertoire for the tuba is unfortunately heavy and loud and noisy, and this is no exception. Um, here we need accuracy, precision, a strong sense of pulse, a sense of line and direction so that we're not just playing one, 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 one. We're going one, two, three, four, one and two. Um, now, that line and direction needs to be reinforced, though, with a very clear articulation. That can be a bit dangerous, but don't worry about it, because when you play an audition, either a tape one or especially a, a live one, the people that listen, they, they are normally players. They know that playing isn't easy, um, and they appreciate you just as much for the error as for the success. What we're looking for, uh, whenever I've sat on an audition panel, is obviously talent and skill, imagination and commitment and involvement. And you don't really want to be a security call player. So really be brave, take a breath, blow the blooming thing, and have a good time. The third area that I think requires a little bit of attention, it certainly does when I have to play it, um, is the area between bars 11 and 12, 13, 14, 15, 16. Those notes are not difficult, but because they are uh, some of them the same, some of them different, uh, very close intervals, they need a lot of attention. And so I'd recommend going back to childhood. Uh, do, do what you did when you were in a band and, and you couldn't play something high. You practiced it down an octave slowly. Uh, and make yourself aware of the notes that are the same and the notes that are different. The notes that are semitones, minor thirds, whole tones, and be very, very careful. And very slow, a little bit like this. And you see how I draw attention to the notes that, that one might be tempted to throw away. You could also perhaps change the rhythm, maybe do something like short, short, long, short, short, long, short, short, long. 
And then change that rhythm again. So instead of it being short, short, long, long, short, short, short. Or sorry, long, short, short, long. <laughs> Any sort of variation so that the, the strong notes lose their strength and the weak notes become the strong notes. So long, triple lit long would be a good one. That sort of thing. Anything that puts the emphasis elsewhere. Simply in order to when you go back to the original, the original feels somewhat easier than all the, the games that you've played. That works for me, it works for lots of my students who've been successful as professional musicians, so I hope it's some use to you. Thanks very much for your time and attention. Bye-bye.